Okay, so I liken the laser treatments when it comes to working on tight muscles is I liken it to rigor mortis. Now rigor mortis is the um, tightening of muscles, the hard, intense contracting of muscles after a person dies, two, three, four, five hours afterwards. And I'm gonna explain in these, with these animations the best I can to uh, show you how and why the why I liken this to rigor mortis, because it really is, it's a good analogy for it. And I actually think it's kind of what's going on, even though it's for a different reason uh, than true rigor mortis. So what we're gonna be looking at here is these animations. And what I'm showing here is um, an endpoint. This is down to the, the smallest part of the cells where you actually have the contractile tissues. You can see this uh, yellow thing here with all these little protrusions. That's represented here by this red thing with the little protrusions. And then this red part here is represented by this blue part here. So sorry it's not matching up with the muscles. It really doesn't matter. Um, the point is, is that we're looking at very, very small parts of the muscle cell itself. So here's the, the big part of the muscle. And then there's the smaller areas. They break down to smaller areas. They break down to smaller areas. So we are looking at very, very small parts of the cells. And this is the mitochondria. That's represented by his little ball things here. And this is the this blue thing is what actually holds the calcium that I'm gonna that I'm describing up here with all these little dots showing that the calcium um, ions. So anyway, what a normal muscle looks like when it gets a nerve impulse. So obviously your brain tells your muscles to contract. And um, the this animation just shows that in, in fairly good. Uh, there's there's more detailed animations out there on how this happens, but this is I'm, this is I'm trying to compare three different situations. So normal is only one thing I got to show, and I'll have a link below to some of the other uh, videos that you can watch to learn more about this if you're interested. So in a normal muscle here, I'm just going to play this, and this is here's the calcium up here. It's purposely kept away, but when a nerve impulse hits, it shoots out the calcium and causes the two ends to come together much quicker than this and then when the contraction goes the nerve impulse goes away these pumps pump the calcium away and the whole thing goes loose again so that's a nerve impulse at the beginning and then the nerve impulse going away and then these calcium pumps keeping this calcium up here away from these fibers so what happens in, in normal tissue in the normal muscle cells is this concentration up here is 100,000 times bigger than the concentration of calcium down here. Now, I didn't put any calcium even showing up at all down here to just to show you it's a big gradient, okay? It's a big different uh, difference from here to in here. These things here are my representation of calcium pumps. They are purposely pumping calcium back up into here, trying to keep this as little as possible. And these calcium pumps need energy and they need energy in the form of ATP and that's what these little things are right here those are mitochondria and there's more of them than, than, than shown here uh, this is just for illustration purposes but they're along the outside and they pump a whole bunch of ATP into this area so ATP is needed uh, in abundance for the calcium pumps to work it's needed in abundance for contraction to work and it's needed in abundance for the relaxation to work. So it's a weird uh, muscle contraction and relaxing is, is very different than any type of machine we see here on, uh, in our world. You know, you, a car runs out of energy and it doesn't go backwards, it just stops working. Well, muscle cells need energy to contract and they need energy to relax and, and these pumps need energy as well. So it's, it's kind of different, kind of hard to understand. But if you get into some of the videos that explain this, it, it makes a lot of sense. So anyway, we'll play that again. So calcium is kept in here, and when a, a nerve impulse hits, it shoots out a whole bunch of calcium. That calcium causes the contraction and the shortening from end to end. And then when the nerve impulse goes away, basically saying muscle relax, then those, those pumps get rid of it all as quick as they can which takes a tremendous amount of energy, and then more energy is needed for these things to let go, and then the whole thing just opens up again. That's how normal muscle fibers, uh, muscle cells work. Now when you get to rigor mortis, so after a person dies, 
they don't have blood flow anymore. But the muscle cells still work the way that you would think. <clears throat> they still work like a normal muscle. But the reason why they go into such hard contraction is because the whole thing runs out of energy. And that's because the blood flow isn't moving, there's no oxygen, there's no nutrients being delivered. There's The mitochondria just don't have anything to work with because they need the oxygen and the fuel to make ATP. So here when I play this, what you'll notice is that the calcium just slowly starts leaking out of here. And the pumps can kind of keep up with it for a little while. So this is maybe an hour or two after death. But eventually this leaks out so much and the energy is so depleted that the pumps can't keep up. And then the last remaining energy is, cause, is, is used to cause intense contraction. And then it's stuck. It just ain't going anywhere else. And that's the rigor that is experienced after death, a few hours after death. Now, this eventually lets go when the body starts to decay. So when the, the decay process happens, these just start to break down, and then the, then the, then the muscles go loose in the, in the person. So that's what rigor is like. So in between that, you have what I call abnormal. <laughs> Now, what I'm going to describe here is there's no way it's everywhere in your body. It's just in specific areas and specific muscles, probably in the areas where you hurt. Um, but this is in areas where you don't hurt as well and where people are tight. And so uh, I'm not going to go into where that would be because it could be all different kinds of places in a person's body. But just put it this way is that you have a whole bunch of areas that are normal and you have certain areas that are abnormal. So this abnormal is the tightness that people feel. So why do, fe why do people feel tight? Well, if you look at this, it kind of makes sense once you understand normal and the rigor mortis. So if I just play this, basically what happens is that the pumps never have enough energy to completely get rid of the calcium in this area. So it's not near as much of a gradient uh, change from this area to this area. It's much more, uh, I don't want to say equalized because that would be like rigor mortis but there's a somewhere in between where there's still calcium in here. And this keeps the muscles shortened. And you can tell, see how this green line here doesn't come out and touch, you know, it doesn't come all the way out to here, like in the normal. See the normal, this is, so this gray box up here is the same length as in this, but here these, the, the ends are pulled in further. So this is, all, this is already slightly contracted without the nerve impulse. That's the point, is that the calcium is in here causing contraction subtly not real intensely, and, um, and, and it's because of the calcium in here and the pump's not being able to get rid of the calcium in here. So here, this will work the same. It's always short, slightly contracted, but then when you get the nerve impulse, it kicks in more, and more contraction happens. You can see that there. And then the pumps do their best to pull the calcium out when the, impulse, the nerve impulse is gone but they fail to pull it all out. So the contraction is just still there. It's not as nice as relaxed as what other muscles could be that have energy. So you gotta understand the lack of energy in muscle cells causes tightening, causes contraction. And that, that is due to a lack of ATP, a lack of cellular energy. And if you have that, it's because the mitochondria are not making energy and they're not making energy for a slightly different reason than with a rigor mortis patient so we'll go into that now and we'll we'll cover that as to why a living person can have this thing that's that's kind of similar to rigor mortis we'll just we'll go into that and we'll delve into that a little bit cellularly and then we'll show how uh, lasers can can fix that problem so here let's go into how the body actually makes energy and um, this is from my website, and so you can you can get access to this. <clears throat> Basically, think of uh, your mitochondria as um, the producers of energy that your body needs. So we take in food, we digest it. The mitochondria, which are in our cells, and I showed them to you in the muscle cells, right? So the mitochondria are these little um, things right here. Okay, those little uh, spheres. So the mitochondria in a muscle cell are all along the actual fibers that are going to need it, they need the energy. So there's obviously not near as many as there really are in real life. There's just, this is just a representation of them. 
But um, your uh, mitochondria are the final stage of digestion. And they actually take the sugars and um, they convert it into the energy that the body wants called ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It's a cool name, um, but ATP is all you need to know. And that's the fuel of the body. So just like you can't put pure oil into your gas in your uh, car and expect it to work, it has to be refined and converted, and then finally you can put it into your car, and it'll take you where you need to go. Same thing with uh, food. It just food is useless for us for the most part until we digest it and then convert it into energy. Food is also used for building blocks, so you can make new tissues. But um, What's interesting here is in the mitochondria, so in these things, in these little surfaces here, are molecules that do this conversion. So here you'll see uh, in, in the membrane, membrane, that's what this is representing, you'll see this thing, which is a cytochrome C oxidase molecule. And normally, these oxygens should be coming in and out of here and making um, ATP and um, water. But what can happen is a nitric oxide molecule can come and attach and block the space and prevent oxygen from going in. So think of this like the, the, the molecule here isn't damaged. It just is useless. It's not able to make energy and because of this thing being stuck in there. So what the lasers do is they come in and they knock that thing out. And then the O2s can start coming in again and making all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm only showing it here coming in once, but it's, it's coming in and out and in and out and in and out and making all kinds of water and ATP over and over and over again. So the cycle is very consistent. Um, now, you know, is it the lasers really aren't coming in and hitting this thing like a cue ball and pool, but the cytochrome C oxidase molecule can accept photonic energy in the form of light and do work with it. So somehow it kicks out that nitric oxide, and all of a sudden the cell can now respirate again, and it will keep on respirating uh, even after the lasers are removed, which is what's so, so neat about this. Now understand, this is happening to trillions and trillions of molecules. If, if you just had one molecule where this happened, you'd never ever notice it. There would be no way to ever measure it. But when this happens to trillions upon trillions of molecules, then you start having problems. And so, you know, you, you focus the laser on where you're having more of these problems, whether these problems are happening in the brain, where you have the greatest concentration of mitochondria, or if they're happening in tight muscles. Either way, you want your body to make energy. If it doesn't make energy, it can't rebuild tissues, and it can't relax muscles, and your brain doesn't work well. All kinds of things. Just liken it to a, um, if you were in a construction um, site, and all the materials were there, the piping, the bricks, the wood, everything they had there, but there was no electricity or gasoline, you wouldn't really get real far. You'd have to start resorting to hammers and, and hand saws. So the energy is a big thing, the nutrients that you put in your mouth and eat and pills you take and all that stuff, all that's important, but the, the energy production is, is critical. So that's how um, lasers work to, um, to fix this chemical problem it is. It's a chemical problem. And then once the ATP is created in abundance, the muscles start relaxing. And, and if I told you it was started within, within minutes, it actually starts within seconds. But after a few minutes, you really start feeling the muscles relax. That's the weird thing. Um, now, I have people that sometimes don't notice it even after 20 or 30 minutes until they walk around. But they do notice the looseness uh, and the effect of it, but oftentimes people can be right on the table getting the laser done, and they'll feel things loosening up. And it's just kind of, it's kind of a mind-boggling that laser light of a certain wavelength could have an effect like this on our cells. Um, but if, but you just got to understand that the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme is very similar to chlorophyll in plants, and uh, chlorophyll in plants probably know that that takes light energy and does something with it. So if you don't expose your plants to light, they get sick and they, you know, they, they don't always die. They probably will, but they don't always die right away. You can just tell that they do not look right until you expose them to light again. So again, this, this whole thing is on my website if you want to read it. Um, you're welcome to do that. But here, just I wanted to make sure I got this in this video uh, to show how the lasers affect uh, the uh, biochemistry. So I hope that helped.